Hey, sports card fans, it's John, Wade Boggs fan. Hope you're all doing well. Today, I am doing a video response for my good friend Don, Don's Field of Dreams cards. He wants us to do a video in which we show and talk about a card in our collection that has some sentimental meaning to us. Not necessarily our most expensive card, uh, in our collection or the card that we like the most but one that has um, some sentimental value and that's why we have it in our collection now if you follow my channel you're probably thinking oh here he goes again and he's going to show off his 1979 tops bump wills error card that got him into collecting but you'd be wrong the card i am going to talk about is one that has a somewhat of a family connection to me on my mom's side. Now, my mom's originally from Massachusetts, and my grandparents on my mom's side got married in 1939, and I believe they had been dating for eight years before they got married. So we're talking about a time frame here of probably the early 1930s. Now, I can't remember all the details that my grandmother told about this story. Unfortunately, uh, she's passed away. But according to her, at some point, I believe when she was dating my grandfather, and I don't know the specific circumstance of how they they met, but she always says that there was this young ball player who she knew or was introduced to or whatever, and I think it was during the time that she was dating my soon-to-be grandfather. And supposedly he asked her out on a date, and she declined because, again, she was seeing my grandfather at the time. But the person's name is Jean Desitel. And I, this was years ago, but I looked up to see whether he played in the major leagues. Turned out he did for a few years and was able to track down one of his cards. What was difficult is he only has two mainstream cards that were made of him. 1939 and the 1940 play ball cards. So I did manage to pick up his 1940 play ball card and I remember showing it to my grandmother and didn't tell her, you know, what it was about or whatever and I said, "Hey, I I just bought this baseball card. She knew I collected baseball cards." And I says, "Do you remember who this is?" And she looked at the card and she says, "Oh, Yes, I remember. I remember Gene Red is his nickname, I guess. And yeah, he asked me out one time or whatever. Well, so that that made me, um, you know, happy to see that she remembered him and tied it into that family story. Uh, so I'm going to turn. I'm going to show off uh, his card here, uh, the 1940 play ball card, and give you some background about his uh, career. Some a uh, pretty interesting career, even though it was very short lived in the major league. So let's go uh, check out that 1940 play ball card. All right, here's the 1940 play ball card of Gene Desitel. And I'll turn the card over here so you can see the back. Eugene A. Desitel was born in Worcester, Massachusetts, uh, close to where uh, my grandparents lived in Southbridge, Massachusetts. And I'll just read the back of this card here and then get into some of the background of, of Gene here. Gene Desitel has had his ups and downs in the American League, but it looks as if he should definitely establish himself this year. Desitel will battle it out with John Peacock for the starting uh, first string catching job with the Boston Red Sox, with whom he shared the burden last year. Gene has showed steady improvement in his hitting, and while he doesn't hit a long ball, the Holy Cross graduate has proved a timely batter in a pinch. Only two other catchers stopped Desitel, topped Desitel in fielding percentage last year. 
So again, this is Jean Desitel, um, the person who asked my grandmother out on a date and got uh, turned down. Uh, but I looked up uh, some information on Jean Desitel. So I want to just uh, talk to you about his uh, brief major league career and uh, minor league career as well. And there's also another twist at the end here that has more of a local connection to me, which I didn't know about before I looked him up. So Eugene Abraham, which is what the A stood for, Eugene Abraham Red Desitel uh, was born June 13th, 1907 and died November 5th, 1994. He played most of his Major League Baseball career as a backup catcher with four teams between 1930 and 1946. Desitel was a light-hitting player but was known for his superior defensive ability as a catcher and for his handling pitching staffs. After his playing career, he served as a manager in Minor League Baseball. All right, some more uh, details here. Again, born in Worcester, Massachusetts to French-Canadian parents. By the way, I know my grandfather was French-Canadian, and I believe uh, his last name was Bouchard. And I want to say my grandmother's side of the family was also French-Canadian, so maybe there's that also a connection there. Uh, Desitel was a protege of Crusaders coach Jack Berry during his playing days at the College of the Holy Cross. After graduating with a bachelor's degree in philosophy, he went directly to the major leagues, making his debut with the Detroit Tigers on June 22, 1930, at the age of 23. He served as a reserve catcher for the Detroit Tigers, playing behind Ray Hayworth and veteran Muddy Rule. When catcher Mickey Cochran joined the Tigers as a player manager in 1934, Desitel was sent to the minor leagues to play for the Toledo Mudhens. He then spent two seasons in the Pacific Coast League with the Hollywood Stars and San Diego Padres. Desitel came back to the major leagues in 1937, playing for the Boston Red Sox as a backup to Rick Farrell. When Farrell was traded to the Washington Senators in June of that same year, Desitel became the starting catcher for the Red Sox. Desitel enjoyed his most productive season with Boston in 1938 when he posted career highs in batting average, 291, home runs, 2, runs batted in, 48, runs, 47, doubles, 16, and games played, 108. However, his offensive performance diminished in 1939 and he would be traded to the Cleveland Indians for Frankie Pitlick after the 1940 season. As a member of the Indians, Desitel played as a reserve catcher behind Raleigh Hemsley. At the beginning of the 1943 season, Indians manager Lou Boudreau named Desitel as the Indians starting catcher, but by the middle of the year he was replaced by Buddy Rosar who was hitting above 300. He entered the United States Marine Corps in February 1944 and was discharged in July 1945 at the age of 38, losing two years from his baseball career. He rejoined the Indians in August 1945, but saw little playing time and was released in September of that year. He was hired by Connie Mack to play for the Philadelphia Athletics in 1946, where he once again played as a reserve catcher behind Buddy Rosar. Desitel retired as a player at the end of the 1946 season at the age of 39. Joe Cronin, the former American League president, was once asked if he ever seen a player win an argument or an umpire change his decision. Cronin said, Gene, Tez Gene Desitel, then a rookie, young catcher with Detroit, was a cocky young fellow and was giving umpire Cal Hubbard a hard time. On a play at second, Desitel slid in and Hubbard called him out as he peered through a cloud of dust. I think Hubbard was hoping Desitel would complain so he could throw him out of the game, too. Desitel said sweetly, You can't call me out. Hubbard blustered, Oh no, why not? Because, Desitel said, I'm sitting on the ball. That was an uh, interesting uh, story there of... Uh, 
Gene Desitel uh, about uh, not uh, getting uh, being out at uh, a play at second. Uh, just a couple other things here. Uh, so career stats in a 13-year major league career, Desitel compiled a major league career batting average of 233, including 461 hits, three home runs, and 187 runs batted in. At the time of his retirement, his 989 career fielding percentage was the second highest by a catcher in Major League history behind Frankie, I think it's Pitelak. So that's interesting. Back in uh, when he retired in 1946, um, he had the second highest fielding percentage of a catcher in Major League history. He led... American League catchers in 1937 with a 993 fielding percentage and a 5.69 range, range factor. Not sure what that is. Desitel only allowed 19 pass balls in his career, the third fewest all time among major league catchers. All right, now for his managing career. So when he was done with uh, um, playing in the major leagues, following his playing retirement, Desitel managed the Williamsport Tigers of the Eastern League for three years from 1947 to 1949. Well, they're not the Williamsport Tigers anymore, but there is currently a minor league team up in Williamsport, Pennsylvania, about a half hour from where I live, and that is the offshoots of the same team played in that same stadium. Um, I think it's called Memorial Stadium up in Williamsport. Uh, so yeah, he managed up he managed the Williamsport Tigers up in Williamsport, Pennsylvania uh, from 1947 to 1949. He then managed the Class A Flint Arrows, a, tech, a Tigers farm team. In 1951, he managed the Double A Little Rock Travelers to their first Southern Association pennant in nine years. Desitel moved on to manage the Indianapolis Indians in 1952 and the Triple A Sacramento Solons. From 1953 to 1954. Later in life, he served as a special counselor for Flint, Michigan high schools. He was inducted into the Holy Cross Athletics Hall of Fame in 1981. Desitel died in Flint, Michigan at the age of 87. So there you have it. Uh, my Jean Desitel card that I purchased uh, because my grandmother told me a story of him asking her out on a date one time uh, back in probably I would venture to say the early 1930s he went on to have a short somewhat successful in some respects major league career and on to a managerial career managing a team that was located about a half hour from where I currently live so uh, Don hey thanks for the great idea for a video response, a, a contest. Um, it's been a while since I actually thought about that Gene Desitel card, so it was nice to uh, take that out of my collection, talk about it, and actually learn a little bit more about Gene Desitel. So that's all I have for you. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.